Hello everyone, welcome to Ikita platform and this is Ravin Jangir here, your electrical faculty and in this video, I am going to talk about the protections against overcurrents. So we will talk about the important points and the, the constructional diagram, which equipments we are actually using and not using there. Okay, so let's start one by one. <music> That is the protection against the overcurrent. So, what is the overcurrent? If the it crosses the uh, permissible value, that is called the overcurrent due to the some uh, fault conditions. So, it is kind of the similar to the AC systems. So, if you talk about whatever we are considering here, that is the overcurrents in the DC system. That is actually the similar to the AC system. So, the factors where it was actually affecting the AC system due to the overcurrents. The same way is it is going to be discussed uh, in the DC system that is in the HVDC. So factors affecting the designing of the protective system for the overcurrents. Now, so these are actually the points which are actually uh, considered every time in the if we talk about the protection schemes, and these are actually the selectivity. So how the currents and how the limits should be selective how the input uh, is coming to the system is actually should be selective so that is a kind of your the value considerations reliability the operation should be reliable so that uh, the one end to another end the transmission of from one end to another end can be in a proper way or you can say the reliable way so reliability backup obviously it is the backup we always require if the one gets failed then another will be there to stand off the the stand of your fault conditions now the sensitivity sensitivity in the sense it can sense the small value of the faults which may cause the damage to your protective system or not the protective system to the equipments which are actually connected so for these uh, whenever we uh, design these are actually the uh, these are actually those points which we always consider okay so the selectivity the reliability backup and the sensitivity so in this case we are also discussing here now the main features of the converter stations protections if we talk about the main features related with the converter station process pro uh, protection is uh, that is possible to clear the faults by the fast controller action so that should be in the fast controlling mode and that is in kind of the nanoseconds not the nano milliseconds also millisecond and microseconds by blocking so how can it be processed so it can be processed by blocking your gate pulses so if we are blocking that gate pulses and uh, with uh, in a short duration of time or you can say the current regulations and current control so these are the actually the main features which are related with the your protection schemes now the selectivity if we as we have uh, the selectivity so selectivity that can be enhanced selectivity you can relate with your if you have studied about the resonance phenomena in the electrical circuits so that selectivity is actually the q factor quality factor or magnification factor so that q factor that q factor is actually consisting omega l by r and one upon omega cr so that is actually uh, given here that is the smoothing reactor that is actually representing the inductors and also the converter transformer which may include a capacitor also the selectivity so i can say over a lot that selectivity is kind of for, for uh, designing your protection schemes as per your requirements so whatever the inductor whatever the capacitor is required in the system so that is actually done by the selectivity and that is called the selectivity factor which is called the q factor that selectivity <coughs> selectivity is enhanced by the smoothing reactors these are enhanced by the smoothing reactors and the converter transformer so these are actually here yeah. now the pro the protective uh, system is designed to switch off so it is uh, designed in such a way that it can switch off the one of the thyristor groups that is if we are using the 12 pulse converter or, or you can say the 6 pulse converter we have then we are having the two sets of the thyristor balls 
one is called the upper portion or you can say the positive commutation portion and the lower one is called the negative commutation process or portion so at a time these are going to be conducted only two so whenever we are applying the protection protection system so it is designed so that it can easily so that it can easily switch off only one of the other may be continued for the operations so at a time it is only uh, considering uh, only the one two of the group was but if we are as we can consider in the 12 pulse converter so six pulse six pulse converter that is a six thyristor uh, system and the lower will be the uh, another six thyristor system so it can switch off one of the six thyristor system in the 12 pulse converter now so let us consider that there is a 12 pulse converter we are having the 12 pulse converter that is we are considering the per pole and uh, it means the two walls groups per pole protection system used for a pole it is given in this diagram so this is the basic fundamental which is actually given here this is the converter this is the circuit breaker so this is actually your circuit breaker okay guys and here the we are having this main supply three phase supply will come here and these are actually co called the converter transformer converter transformer these are the your uh, inductive values which are given here these are the th converter station number one and the converter stations number two okay not the converter station this is the uh, six pulse thyristor and the another six pulse thyristor which is given here this is ocp that is over current protection vgp wall group protection so i can write that is ocp is over current protection and that is a vgp that is a wall group protection now pdp the pole differential protection so this is the basic connections diagram which is actually included here the circuit breaker we have uh, discussed already and this is the this is the basic fundamental for the overcurrent protection as we have also seen in uh, if you talk about uh, in the ac systems the ac transmission systems so this is uh, we have uh, talked about like this and this is kind of the connection uh, which is uh, given here this is though you can say this is the basic of fundamental diagram related with your overcurrent protection now these are the important points which i have included so that you can understand easily that is the basic protection against the current converter faults so this is kind of the basic the basic fundamental protection schemes which we are actually applying for the uh, against the converter faults is provided by the wall group differential protection what is the wall group differential protection this is the vgp which is attached here with the connection of the trans with the windings of that so differential protection which compares the rectifier current on the wall side of the converter transformer to the dc current measured on the line side of the smoothing reactor so it is kind of the line side of the smoothing reactors so we are if we talk about the hvdc transmission systems so in between these two hvdc transmission systems we are having the thyristors uh, we are having the hvdc pro, hvdc transmission lines and where we were actually using the smoothing reactors and where the dc current was uh, flowing and the dc circuit breaker we were actually using so this is all about that we uh, i have uh, written there now so if we talk about if we talk about the differential protection okay so differential protection is kind of for the selectivity and the for the fast detection so if you want the more selectivity or enhanced selectivity for the operation of the protection system and the fast detection so that it can be detected fast 
so that the selectivity and the fast detection is kind of the same the first uh, detection is kind of the operation the fast operation schemes it is talking about so if you talk about the differential protection it is these are the two important points now so over current protection system that is ocp we have discussed the ocp so that is the ocp circuit this is ocp circuit this is ocp circuit clear now so that ocp circuit is kind of uh, sometimes it is used as a backup so please remember this now pdp so we have discussed the pdp this is uh, we have used the pdp here this is the pdp what is the pdp pdp is a pole differential protection pdp is a pole differential protection and which is connected between these two points okay now so is uh, detect the ground faults example the faults at the neutral bus so it can detect the ground faults otherwise it is actually not possible to detection of the ground faults so for the detection of the ground faults and uh, so which is actually the faults at the neutral bus you can talk about so that is actually can be done by the pdp that is a pole differential protection otherwise it is no, sometimes it is not possible to detect the ground falls okay guys now we will move for the another point the fast tripping okay fast tripping sequence is used for the internal falls where there is a danger of the wall damage where there is a danger for the, of the wall damage so i can say the fast tripping sequence so why the fast tripping sequence is used actually whenever there is an internal falls in your system so if there is an internal faults in your system your converter station or converter transformers so then there will be we can use a fast tripping sequence so if uh, if there is a danger then the wall uh, danger of the wall damage there, so there will be chances of the damage of the walls now which causes so what will happen if this occurs so which causes the increase in the delay angle so I can say if there is a damage the chances of the walls to be damaged then this may cause the delay angles to be increased and where it will increase it is specified that it will increase at the rectifier side and how much it can increase that is up to the 150 degree and along with that there will be a signal along with that there will be a signal to trip the AC breaker so I hope over and all you have understood that the fast tripping sequence where it will be used and the, whenever there will be internal faults what kind of internal faults in the walls converter transformer converter uh, not the converter also the bridge converters so there will be a chances of the walls to be damaged and which will cause the increase in the delay angle but where that will be in the rectifier and how much it will be increased that is a 150 degree celsius and along with that there will be a signal to trip the ac breakers now which allows the inverter action if this is all happening there so which will allow the inverter action at the rectifier station as we are as we have the dual converters one on the con one will operate as uh, your rectifier another is operating as a uh, inverter that all depending on the value of the alpha if alpha is less than uh, zero, if alpha is lying on the range from the 0 to 90 degree then it is going to be a rectifier there if it is operating from 90 to 180 degree then it is going to be inverter but whenever this is happening so delay angle will be for more than the 90 degree and if it is more than the 90 degree then uh, as we have written there the 150 degree so 150 degree kind of from 90 to 180 degree operation in the it uh, right so obviously which will allow which will allow the inverter action at the rectifier station it means now the rectifier will operate as an inverter so that it can reduce the current before the converter is blocked so if it is so uh, if it is fault condition then the converter is going to be blocked there but what will what it will do it, it will do before the converter is is to be blocked it will do the inverter action at the rectifier station and so that if the current at the reduce it will be reduced there now, now we are talking about the classifications of the faults producing so what are the basic classifications of the fault producing now the one is your internal faults that is on the walls okay internal faults which causes the high overcurrents 
but are very high frequent and so it is in the frequent of uh, these are the frequent and also high overcurrent when the one of the thyristor is a, a kind of there is a fault so there will be a uh, high overcurrent it means the more value or more amount of uh, current will flow as it is not per permissible to allow there now we will move for the second one second classification the uh, second classification is specifying that the line falls which causes the overcurrents okay so in the will be in the range of two to three per unit so it is kind of given that the range is provided here if the line falls if the or you can say understand in such a way that if the overcurrents is caused due to the line falls so that will be in the range of that is written here that is in the two to three per unit and these are actually limited by the cc what is actually the cc current control current control okay guys now the point number three or the classification number three is specifying that uh, there is a commutation failure at the inverter may be the quite frequent <laughs> okay so the commutation it is a type of another fault condition so commutation failure at the inverter so if it is uh, operating at the it is occurring at the inverter may be quite frequent it is a frequent way so it will take this uh, short duration of time however the overcurrents are quite a small and limited by the cc limited by the cc it means it will be limited by the current control as we have already uh, seen the characteristic curves of the rectifier and the inverters so where we have drawn in the uh, like this we have drawn okay so that is the characteristic curve and this is the cc so that we have already talked about there because of the continuous and because of the actually the because of the continuous conduction during the commutation failure what is the commutation failure we have discussed that the that the transferring of the current from one wall to the another wall okay where which is from the one of the uh, commutation group okay or you can say the one to three or three to five in such a way and when it is fails to commute it every time it it should be uh, commuted after uh, the one you can say the after the one uh, nay after the your 60 degree operation so it should be commuted but due to the failure of that so the current reference has to be reduced so that current has to be reduced there so these are the basic fundamentals uh, which i have come up with uh, these points so i hope you have uh, uh, cleared your concepts by uh, uh, studying these points so tata bye bye and thank you so much